Hi, welcome back. Well, they say it's one of the largest unreached people groups in the world. 250 to 300 million people around the globe. I'm talking about the deaf. And I'm here to chat with a man on a mission uh, to the deaf, uh, Dr. Larry Evans. How are you, Larry? Very good, thank you. Excellent. Good to be with you. Now, you wor work for the Seventh-day Adventist Church at the Global Headquarters. At the World Headquarters in uh, uh, near Washington, D.C. Okay. So what brings you to uh, this part of the world? Well, I had an invitation to come to speak and, and uh, live for a few days with mm -hmm. a group of deaf, uh, not too far from Brisbane, where they gathered together for, uh, we might call it a camp meeting type mm -hmm. thing. Okay, and how'd that go? Yeah, it was very good. I enjoyed it. We had a, a wonderful time uh, talking about spiritual things, nurturing and building up uh, the, the spiritual experience of our deaf. Oh, that sounds great. I understand also, Larry, you visited Papua New Guinea while you were in this part of the world. Yes, I, it was a, it's a good experience. I've been to Papua New Guinea a number of times. This particular time I was talking with pastors, but of special interest was a, a visit with a pastor mm -hmm. who happens to have 20 or so individuals who are deaf who are meeting each week to, to go to church. Okay. And um, they are all deaf, and he happens to be an interpreter. He has been an interpreter uh, through grade school uh, when he was a teacher. Mm -hmm. So it was very good to meet with him and some of his leaders to talk about the future of the deaf work in Papua New Guinea. Wow. Now, I, I imagine that in a developing country like Papua New Guinea, there must be particular challenges for connecting with deaf people. I mean, which, which sign language does he speak? Uh, well, it's kind of a combination. Uh, as I asked him about that, it's Auslan sign language, mm -hmm. but uh, they have their con kind of a conglomerate mm -hmm. of Auslan and uh, Papua Ghanaian. So uh, are there particular challenges for people in developing countries? Um, I mean, uh, there are a lot of technologies that we use in, um, in, in the West that and I imagine aren't available in places like It makes it like more PNG. difficult. Um, you know, one of the things working with the deaf, uh, those of us in the more developed countries tend to think in terms of PowerPoint and computers mm -hmm. and all this. Mm. I would venture to say that whether we are developed or developing countries, the number one thing is relationships. Yeah. You know, it's not a program that's gonna reach the deaf. It's people. Mm -hmm. People who care, people who are compassionate, and the deaf respond to that. Mm. The problem with the deaf, wherever we are, what, no matter what country, is they have been felt to be ostracized, mm. pushed out of the culture, pushed out of whatever, neglected. Excluded. Excluded, yeah. oftentimes yeah. not intentionally, mm. but they feel that. Yeah, well, I mean, as, as I said in my introduction, what, 250 to 300 million people around the world who are considered an unreached people group. Well, the, the reason why we call them unreached is because there's less than 2% mm. of, of that number mm. who are Christian. Wow. So, and the reason why, to a large degree, that they are not is because, one, they feel that the God of, of those who worship doesn't mm. know how to communicate with the deaf. Mm. So why should, I, why should I talk to that God? Mm. Other, and, and another reason is many churches simply do not have uh, an interpretation for them when they go to mm. church on Sabbath or on a Sunday or whenever. Mm. There just is not an interpretation for them. Okay. So there's nothing there for them. So you, I think you've already given us a couple of hints on how a local church can reach the deaf more effectively. You mentioned relationships. You've mentioned interpreting. Um, can you unpack that a little bit more? Man? How do I create a relationship with someone who I struggle to communicate with. Well, you do it by, by letting them know that you care. Mm -hmm. Another way we do it is by including them in our social activities. Mm -hmm. Now that's a little difficult because you can't communicate with them, sure. but, but have them begin by coming to your home. If you have an interpreter, invite the interpreter to come with you and to meet with them. Mm -hmm. The idea though is to be, to, to be friendly, to be kind to them. Sometimes simply taking a, uh, a casserole, mm -hmm. a, a, a little dessert, or something special that you think that they might appreciate. Mm. Most of all, notice them. Mm -hmm. Be close to them. Sit with them in church. Uh, for years, uh, I mean, the way I got started with the deaf workers, I noticed that a pastor came to pastor's meeting and he couldn't hear anything. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. So then I took him to my office and we typed out, at that time it was a TTY, just a little LED screen, but now we have the computers and he would type and I would type and I would brief him on the things that were happening mm -hmm. uh, that would be of interest to him. Okay, so even if you don't know sign language, you could, for example, have a laptop there and be typing notes that you're hearing from the sermon and pointing to the verses in, in the Bible. And, Absolutely. Wow. C can you give me an example of sort of, I guess, a, a best practice uh, sort of, you know, church that you've, a congregation that you've seen that does this really well? H have you seen that anywhere around sure. the world? Sure. There are some really strong examples in South America. I can think of some in North America, mm -hmm. but scattered around, there are a few that really do it well. Uh, they have an interpretation, for example, mm -hmm. but the interpretation, and we say interpretation rather than translation, yeah. interpretation, uh, the deaf need to set up front. Mm -hmm. and the reason why the deaf need to set up in front, say in a church, and off to a side even, that would be fine, because they can easily be distracted by people running back and forth or doing different things, mm -hmm. because their eye has to be focused on the speaker or whoever is uh, signing for them. Mm -hmm. So that's, to me, that is one of the things, and they also, uh, have a song leader mm -hmm. who is signing that song. Mm. And the deaf t t in a, is quite amazing. Uh, they are geared towards rhythm more than the rest of us. Yes. So, so this is something for our audience perhaps who's not too keen on, you know, contemporary worship music. It's actually something with a bit of heavy bass and, and, <laughs> and a rhythmic thing is actually going to work better for a, a deaf audience. Yeah, is that right? It doesn't have to be really lively music, yeah. but if there is a solid beat to it, that's yes. easier. And it's very interesting, if you've never seen it, you can have a, a deaf quartet, for example. Wow. And the deaf quartet will often kind of dance to the music as they begin to do their sign language. Wow, that's, that's incredible. Mm. It's a culture. See, we must not think of deafness as a disability. Mm. It is a culture. And when I, since I mentioned the word disability, something that's very, very important is we must not think of deafness as a disability or any other impairment, because if we do that, we begin to identify a person with what they cannot do mm -hmm. rather than who they are. Mm -hmm. One of the best things that the rest of us can do, regardless of, quotes the disability, it is to identify with what they can do. Mm. If we do that, then we can find a place for them in the church. Mm. So look, look, look for the strengths, not the, not yeah. the weaknesses. Yeah, it goes, goes for anyone, I guess. It goes for anyone, <laughs> yeah. but, it, but it's really true for the deaf yeah. too. Now you, you had a Bible text you wanted to share with us here, though. <laughs> you know, people ask, why is it that I have such a, a passion for this? Well, I don't know. I didn't put the passion in my heart for this, um, but there is a Bible passage that, that drives me. It's found in Proverbs 31, verses eight and nine. Here's what it says. Speak up for those who cannot speak, hmm. who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up for those people. And then verse 9 says, speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. And that's what I do in my new job. Boy, that's, a, that's incredible because you, you read that text and you hear it a whole new way in, yeah. in a whole new context. Right. Hey, thanks so much, Larry. I really appreciate your time. If, if um, our viewers want to find out more about Adventist Deaf Ministries International, you've got a website, have you? Absolutely. We have a website, but we also have a new deaf channel that is coming. Oh, great. This new deaf channel will have subtitling. We'll have it in five languages. And video we'll, on demand. That's the idea, isn't it? It'll be video on demand so they can watch these programs in four different categories. Those categories are children, uh, nature, uh, Bible study, and health. Okay. Geared for the deaf. 200 programs waiting to be watched. Awesome. Love it. There's a deaf channel, AdventistDeaf.org. Well, there you go. There's a couple of websites for you to check out. Thanks so much for your time, Larry. I really appreciate it. It's inspirational to hear, you know, what God's doing with the deaf community around the world. God is active. We need to join Him. <laughs> Great. We'll see you straight after the break.